Welcome back to the OBS Super User Guidebook. Right here on OBS, we have color monitors. These can be used to color match multiple cameras together and make sure when you're using multiple cameras in a video production that everything matches. So let's take a look at this in this video. So real quick, before we get started, just wanna remind everybody you can download the OBS Super User Guidebook in the links below. It's also available on Amazon if you'd like to have a paperback copy. And if you like this video or like this type of video, hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos because only 10% of our viewers are subscribed and it means a lot to us to have you guys on board. If we're doing something wrong, let us know in the comments below. You know, we would be happy to answer your questions about the content and go through this journey together. All right, let's take a look at the color monitors over here inside of OBS that allow us to see very close detail to what's going on in our video sources. So really quickly, how do we get these color monitors? Well, you install the color monitor plugin. So in the downloads, we'll see that we do have options for Mac, Windows, and Linux. We can quickly install this, and once you've got it set up inside of Tools, you will see an option for New Scope Dock. And you can choose either Program or Preview. Program is your main output, and then you can do preview as well. Now, other sources can be selected after the creation, so we'll add the scope. Essentially, the scopes right now are set to be whatever's in my program, right? So I've got my, my program here. So what I'm going to do, and this is something a lot of people have to do if they have multiple cameras in the same video production, is try to figure out how can we get these two cameras to match. A lot of times, one's a little bit more blue than the other, one has a little bit more brightness than the other. But how do we truly tell to how can we color match multiple cameras? Because you can't always trust your monitor. Monitors have different color representation. There could be glare on your monitor, but what we can 100% trust are color monitors. So first of all, a vector scope is a monitor that represents the color of your images. It's an X and Y graph with representation of the color accuracy of your live video feed. So each major color is displayed on the graph with an area that represents the perfect area of true color representation. And you can even see in here, there's a little R for red, there's a little B for blue, G for green, Y, L for yellow. And the vector scope graph allows you to balance colors that are coming in, these live video sources into OBS. You can see if I switch cameras, each of these cameras have different vector scope readings. We're looking at that first scope right here, the vector scope. An example to use the vector scope is you can start looking at different camera inputs and see how they are reacting. Now, one thing that really helps when you're using a vector scope is to zoom into a color chart. So what I'm gonna do just to get some really good color representations is I'm going to zoom into a color chart. This is a really great way to use a vector scope because now we can say, okay, now we're really seeing yellow should be reaching into that yellow space. The red is not really hitting the reds that we would like. The blue is definitely off and the green is off. So we need to adjust this camera's setting just because we know these colors right here should be correct. And the yellow is probably the closest one on this vector scope. Blue is off, okay, et cetera, et cetera. If I go to this other camera over here, my camera one put this same chart in front of camera two here. And we can see the yellow is not really as far over as we would have liked, and the red and the blue, for example. So let's edit this camera. Now, you always want to edit the camera first before you start doing color correction inside of OBS. So the exposure is at full auto. Well, we're going to talk about exposure after we talk about the vector scope. So the vector scope is color. So let, let, let's, let's focus on color. And this, this auto white balance obviously is not working too good for us. So we'll go to, we have the variable, we have manual, we have one push. Now one push is a white balance mode. A lot of times you can kind of get a gray card like this in front, run a one push where it calculates the color. 
And a lot of times that helps quite a bit. So if your camera has a white balance color, that made a big difference, actually, if you're looking at it now. That actually helped a lot. Look how much that helped. The yellow is getting closer. The red's getting closer. The blue is getting closer. Vector scope for colors. You can see how they are shown on that X and Y graph, and you want to reach those perfect blue, green, yellow, and red colors. Now, the next scope that we have is the waveform monitor. And the waveform monitor is really the counterpart to the vector scope. And this monitor allows you to, choose, to see the, the brightness of an image. Now, this time, what we're going to do is we are going to use the color correction tools. And the reason why is because it's really going to show you how the colors affect the waveform monitor. Now, still, you should know that obviously you want to get things right in the camera first, then color correct in OBS. But just to show you the effect of when I reduce the brightness, see what happens with the waveform monitor. You see that? If the bulk of your data is falling off, that means you're clipping the blacks. If you're too bright, you're crushing them. And the data is going off the top until so, so it's just completely white. So you want to have the majority of your color data in the middle range. So you know, you'll be able to see if you're, you're already cutting off the data that you might have already access to. When we, when we stretch the contrast, we're stretching those colors in the middle there. So it gives you a good idea if you are going between two cameras, you can say, okay, well, one camera is the brightness is too bright at the top, and then the other camera has a more balanced brightness here in the middle. So we can look at our vector scope and our waveform monitor at the same time and start to use some of these tools to try to reach out and say, okay, how can I get that blue a little bluer? How can I get the reds a little bit more red? Starting with the camera, but then just using these here. And ideally, you want your camera's image to be within the limits of the waveform monitor. Make sure that your video has perfect whites and blacks using a color correction filter as needed to make adjustments. The waveform monitor is essential for completing precise color correction adjustments that oftentimes novices can't detect these issues without a good color monitor. So this helps you start to read the waveform monitor. Now histograms, which is our last one over here, this is the one below, and they're stacked uh, all three together here. The histograms are very easy to look at because they read left to right, giving red, green, and blue colors very clear representation the horizontal axis represents brightness or luminance and the vertical axis shows the percentage of pixels that are in the image of that specific color so you can quickly look at this and go okay i'm seeing a lot of blue i'm seeing a little bit of yellow and i'm seeing a little bit of red so you're the colors there you're seeing which ones are the brightest. Now, as we ch if we change the saturation, now we're seeing, okay, now we're getting a lot more red. Now we're getting a lot more yellow. Now we're getting a lot more blue. How can I make this more saturated with, with keeping a good balance of color? And by looking at all three of these scopes together, so if there's no color, there is nothing on the vector scope at the very top. As we add color, the color stretches out to the ideal color, stretching to red, stretching to cyan and green and blue. In the middle there, we're looking at the waveform monitor. We don't want those colors to go off the scale. Once they start going off the top and bottom, then we're losing data, right? It's starting to clip. It's going overboard. So we don't want to oversaturate our image and have our colors bouncing off the edges of our scope. This waveform monitor in the middle helps us keep things in balance. Then the final scope, the histogram, allows us to see all the colors and their brightnesses as they relate to each other. So using these three together, starting with the camera settings on your actual camera, then going to color corrections inside of OBS, you should be able to color match multiple cameras together with accurate tools that don't rely on things that could fool you, such as your own color perception, your monitors that might not be you know, color accurate, and 
the cameras themselves. So the waveform monitor, vector scope, and histogram are the best way to do it. So this is very advanced stuff, but it's incredible to see free color vector scopes, waveform monitors, and a histogram. These are professional tools built into OBS. So it's really exciting to see. I hope that this helps you guys. If you've got a camera that's kind of not matching another, you can follow these steps in this video to make it better. All right, we're gonna switch gears now. We've gone over all of the advanced plugins inside of OBS that we're covering in this book. And we're gonna start moving to IP video and looking at some of the innovations available and integrations for OBS. So stay tuned. Yeah.